The Jerusalem Channel is made possible by viewer support. Thanks for watching. The Apostle Paul gave us the inspiring imagery of running a good race in life, much as these 3,000 participants in the annual Jerusalem Marathon. Lots of things are happening these days in Israel's ancient capital, and we're here with the Jerusalem Channel to keep you informed of the fast-paced events and news through our daily website updates and regular video reports and biblical teachings. To continue this viewer-supported ministry, we need your help. Please become a part of the Jerusalem Channel by donating. Just click the Donate button on our website to give by credit or debit card. You can also donate by check to our U.S. address or our U.K. post office box. We're here to anticipate that one day soon we'll witness thousands running joyfully through the streets of the Holy City to welcome King Messiah. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. That's a remarkable prayer found in the tiny third letter of John. I'm quoting verse 2 of the King James Version in the New Testament from this third epistle of John. This is the Apostle John writing to a friend named Gaius. And we know from his epistles that John was an affectionate person. He wrote so much about love, and he was especially close to the Lord Jesus. John stood at the cross, and it was to John that Jesus entrusted the safekeeping of his mother Mary. And we learn from John's prayer that Jesus' closest disciple was one who believed deeply in divine, spiritual, and physical health. So what exactly did John have to say about this? Hello, I'm Christine Darg. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. Is this one of your favorite Bible verses? Well, it's one of my favorites. And let's examine closely the words of this text in the third epistle of John, verse 2. Only 14 verses in this chapter. I wish, or more correctly, I pray. You see, prayer is a sanctified wish. Let me ask you, can you turn your wishes into prayers? If you know in your heart that you really can't make your wish a prayer, then you're wishing for the wrong things. I wish or pray that thou mayest prosper. Yes, we learn here that it's legitimate to ask God for prosperity for our friends if, like Gaius, to whom St. John addressed his letter, our friends love and serve God. From this little one chapter epistle, we learn some qualities about Gaius, that he walked in truth, he walked in love, and he practiced hospitality. And hospitality is a big thing according to Bible standards. And that you may be in health. Here in this verse, we can rejoice that health is considered necessary to the enjoyment of life and prosperity, even as thy soul prospereth. Now, this is amazing. John congratulates his friend for his soul prosperity. You see, there is a relationship between soul prosperity and outward prosperity. The inward spiritual health of John's friend Gaius is made the standard for his outward prosperity. Think about that. Dare we pray the same way for many of our friends? Dare we pray this prayer for ourselves? And what would be the result if such a prayer were answered? In other words, do you want me to pray that your outward health would be on the same par as your inward health? 
Well, that's great if you are spiritually strong, but if the truth be known, what if you're spiritually feeble? Then, according to the standards of John's prayer here, you would be physically feeble. Think for a minute about the symptoms of bad health and how these symptoms correspond to spiritual illness. For example, a loss of physical appetite would correspond in the spiritual world to having no spiritual hunger for the things of God. A low body temperature would correspond to lukewarmness towards God and so forth. The implication of this fascinating verse in 3 John 2 is that our physical life should ideally correspond to the health of our soul. Well, for years, I had this verse framed in one of my offices, and I would meditate upon this verse, 3 John 2, to draw strength from it. And Bible teacher Derek Prince of Blessed Memory said this verse, 3 John verse 2, is a scripture that most believers really need to take to heart. For many years, Derek taught and lived in Jerusalem, and he was a true Bible scholar, and bless his heart, he not only taught on basic doctrine and how to pray, how to fast, how to be a biblical watchman upon the walls, and so forth. In his own way, he was a pioneer in understanding Hebrew roots. But Derek also did not neglect the healing ministry. I like that so much about his ministry because his ministry was so well-rounded. Derek was faithful to pray for the sick, which is really unusual for a minister who specializes in the pulpit ministry like he did. Frankly, many ministers avoid praying for the sick and taking an active part in that aspect of the gospel, either because they haven't been called by the Lord to prepare themselves for such a ministry, because after all, the healing ministry is quite demanding, or they simply deem it to be too controversial. Really, I have to tell you that a lot of ministers, for them, the price is just too high to pursue the message of divine healing. Although many promises of healing are clearly revealed all throughout this Bible for anybody who will believe God's word and appropriate God's many promises of healing and divine health. Anyway, Derek Prince told us that when he first started to read 3 John 2 with the eyes of faith, the word simply knocked him out. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. But instantly, Derek said his old prejudices and preconceptions rose up within him, and he thought to himself, this verse cannot be true. It's impossible. It can't mean what it plainly says. Now let's be honest and admit that many of us have had the same thoughts about a lot of the Lord's plain promises in this book. But God says what he means and means what he says. You see, God is always saying to us, incline your ear to my words. Hear my word. Believe my word. Don't resist me and don't resist my word with your petty arguments, with your petty prejudices and your petty preconceptions. God says, don't try to reinvent my word with what you've been taught in seminaries and in churches. God says, bend that stiff neck of yours and let me teach you. Well, incline your ear is a Hebraism in the Bible, and it means to bend down, to humble oneself. In other words, to be teachable. Derek Prince used to say an essential requirement for receiving healing through the Word of God is to lay down your preconceptions and prejudices against the healing ministry. We have to be willing to bend our stiff necks, to incline our ears and hearts and to bend down. In other words, to become like little children in order to listen carefully to what God says. And this is important. We mustn't reject the clear word of God because it doesn't agree with what we think God should have said 
or because we don't like the style of some healing preacher. God's a lot bigger than our limited understanding, and he's a lot bigger than all of our prejudices. Incline your ear and let him teach you how much he's willing to do for you. Because the Lord is a willing healer. Do you recall in the Gospels how a man with leprosy came to Jesus and begged him on his knees saying, If you're willing, you can make me clean. But Jesus was indignant at the man's uncertainty of whether or not the Lord was willing. So Jesus reached out and touched the man and saying, I am willing, be clean. And immediately the leprosy left him. Well, our main text today is 3 John 2. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. This verse is concise but comprehensive. And it's the key verse of this little epistle. In this verse, we learn that it's okay, it's proper to pray for temporal blessings. Because without good health and prosperity, we're simply unable to labor effectively for God. But this prayer, while it's concerned about prosperity in this lifetime, nevertheless contains a proportional thought that physical prosperity and health may be in proportion to the prosperity of a person's soul. Bible scholars infer that St. John regarded the transitory matters of prosperity and health as of great importance for our own sake, for the sake of our families, and for the sake of the gospel, prosperity in life is desirable. Health, especially divine health, is one of the Lord's best gifts to us. The wording of the apostles seems to indicate that he was praying for his friend's physical health to be as strong as his spiritual health. Many people in the churches don't really think God wants us to be well. But here in this epistle, the Apostle John says it's a top priority in prayer for his beloved friend. The commentaries on this verse say that an ascetic and austere person like a hermit or a monk would be surprised that one of the greatest apostles should emphasize physical healing. But the better a person's health, the more thoroughly he can serve God. But it's true that the Lord sometimes allows sickness to discipline a rebel's heart. But a believer whose faith is firm and whose character is established should appreciate and advocate the blessing of a sound body and a robust constitution. Sickness and infirmities lessen the capacity for clear thinking, for strong resolve and activity to accomplish exploits for the Lord. While the health of the soul was surely important in the apostle's mind, nevertheless, he also prayed for bodily health to support a person's soul and spirit. So why can't we take this verse to heart? Why can't we take it and other healing promises in the Bible at face value? Well, Derek Prince's healing testimony as a grown man was very edifying to me. He was in hospital for a long time due to military service and harsh weather in the desert of the Middle East. And God used sickness to corner Derek in the hospital to teach him to learn, to be teachable about receiving the healing promises in this word. Being in hospital for one year, Derek had plenty of time to study God's word concerning healing. He was desperate. He sought answers for his physical problem. His skin had broken down. And he read promises in his Bible about healing and prosperity. Yet he just couldn't receive the promises. His attitude was conditioned by his religious upbringing and religious background to reject the plain teaching of the Bible concerning the good news of divine health. But by then he had become born again. He had become a follower of Jesus. Yet, at that point, he was basically ignorant of God's word. His religious background was from a tradition where 
Christianity was not associated with joy. He was brought up in so-called churchianity to be a miserable person. But he rejected all of that, and now he found himself languishing in the hospital and wondering what was going on in his life. God will use such extremities to get our attention. At that time, Derek discovered God's medicine bottle in the Bible. In the marvelous instructions found in Proverbs chapter 4. It says, and I love these verses, My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. For they are life unto those that find them and health to all their flesh. That last part, health to all their flesh, caught Derek's attention because that wonderful promise not only covered the problem of his skin condition, but his entire body. God was promising him healing, but could he believe it? Could he receive it? Well, as he read the healing promises about health and strength, long life, prosperity, and so forth, he shook his head rather than inclining his ear to God's word. The verses just seemed too good to be true for this Cambridge-educated philosopher. He also tried to meditate upon one of my favorite verses in Psalm 103, which declares that God forgives all of our iniquities and heals all our diseases, so that our youth is renewed like the eagles. He responded to this straightforward verse by thinking, that's just impossible. But thankfully, God broke through because Derek was a seeker, and God spoke to Derek almost audibly that he must learn to incline his ear and be a pupil and let God be the teacher. So on his hospital bed, Derek got the revelation that he was refusing to let the Holy Spirit be his teacher. He was still clinging to his own preconceptions. He had to be willing to give up his prejudices against God's word in the healing ministry. And he learned an important principle that I'd like to pass on to you because it's so very important to me that God's word will work for us only insofar as we will receive it. If we don't receive God's word like medicine to all our flesh, it simply can't do us any good. You see, this word is able to save your soul. It's able to heal your body and bring you many untold blessings, but only if you're willing to receive it with meekness. Derek, whom I always considered to be a sophisticated man, Next received a rhema word, that's a living word from God, from James chapter 1, verse 21. I've never known anyone else to teach on this particular verse. But here in James 1, 21, God was telling this sophisticated man, Derek Prince, to be meek and not to be naughty. The verse says, therefore, get rid of all moral felt and superfluous naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. God was telling Derek that he was being naughty. Well, what is naughtiness? Of course, we associate naughtiness with the behavior of an ill-mannered child, especially a willful brat. We often see a naughty child in a grocery store sassing and arguing with its mother because it wants some treat or because it's not getting its own way. So God's saying that one of the types of behavior as believers that we have to give up is being willful and naughty. A naughty child talks back. It sasses. But God is telling us, pay attention to my words. Receive my word. Don't answer back with your willful, contrary thoughts. God says, when I tell you something, don't say it can't be true. Don't say this word can't possibly mean what it says. Let the Holy Spirit be your teacher. Don't answer back with your own opinion. 
That's a key. Derek Prince said we have to face the fact that many of us have mental and religious barriers when we read the Bible. Or to put it another way, we read the Bible through cultural filters. Therefore, we have to humble ourselves and say, Holy Spirit, teach me what this word really says. While Derek began an interesting practice during his recovery process, he began to bow his head over the Bible three times a day after meals because that's how people normally take medicine with their meals. Derek said, Lord, these words of yours are supposed to be medicine to all my flesh. And so I'm taking them now as my medicine in the name of Jesus. Within a few months, God's medicine bottle in this word achieved the promised result. Derek was totally restored to health in every area of his body, and he was healed of the dreaded disease, eczema. I like Derek's testimony so much. He could be clever and stay sick, or he could be simple like a child and get healed. He testified, I could go on being wise in the world and stay sick, or I could do something that was foolish in the eyes of the world, believe this Bible and get healed. Proverbs 4 says, Let my words not depart from thine eyes. And Jesus himself spoke of having a single eye, meaning to stay focused on this light and this truth. He wants us to read the Bible the way it's written and take it for what it says and teaches. We simply cannot measure God and his word by the standards of our denominational backgrounds. It's sad, but many churches teach that the age of miracles has long passed. But that's a lie because God says in his word, I change not. In Hebrews 13, 8, Jesus, the Messiah, the same yesterday, today, and forever. There's absolutely no indication anywhere in the scriptures that miracles have ceased. In fact, it's the opposite in this Bible. It teaches that miracles are available for those who believe. Yet people insist on teaching cessationism. And then when we come under the influence of a preacher who says, The day of miracles is gone. We develop a prejudice, an ungodly prejudice toward the Bible. And we run the risk of forfeiting its wonderful promises. May God deliver us from our ill-conceived prejudices and heresies. Let's not approach the Bible with erroneous thinking that the age of miracles is past. Because when you see a promise for a miracle clearly written in this word, you probably won't be able to grasp or receive it. And that would be tragic. Let's become teachable and believe everything this word says. So let's not quibble with God. To quibble with God is an indulgence, a temptation. God instructs us simply to attend to his words. That means when God speaks, he wants our attention. He doesn't want us multi tasking but listening and paying close attention to his instructions that's why many times I'm, I'm tempted to read the bible and have the news going in the background but jesus said to his disciples take heed to what you hear and how you hear god said in exodus 15 26 when he gave the covenant of healing to israel if you will diligently hear and heed the voice of the Lord your God, and do what is right in his sight. Give ear to his commandments, and keep all of his statutes. I will put none of the diseases on you which I have brought on the Egyptians. For I am the Lord your healer. In the vernacular, this would mean, I am the Lord your doctor. Did you notice the emphasis upon hearing and listening in this important foundational verse in Exodus 15:26 If you will diligently heed the voice of the Lord your God the verbs here are to hear to listen and in the New Testament we learn in Romans 10:17 that faith comes by hearing and hearing 
by this word of God. So the right and proper attitude towards God's word is to receive it with meekness and not with naughtiness. If you reject God's word, you're being naughty like a stubborn child. Attending to God's word produces hearing, and then hearing produces faith, and without faith it's impossible to please God. God will sometimes allow you to be sick, like what happened to Derek Prince, in order to learn to receive healing from him and from his word. If you have any problem today, I guarantee you, your problem can be solved by the word of God. But you'll have to search this book to find the words of life that can help you. Many people write to me with healing requests all the time. They want the healing, but they don't necessarily want to invest the time in attending to God's word. Many just want what I call a touch and go. Lay hands on me. Let me get healed and that's all I want. They don't really want Jesus. They want you to put them on your prayer list and do their praying for them. But they should learn to pray for themselves and to get results for themselves by inclining their ears and hearts and attending to God's word. Jesus will use sickness so that you will come to him to be whole. And that's why he heals you, because he's compassionate and to bring you to himself in his love and mercy. You see, the Lord wants a relationship with you. Some people try to make deals with God, but God doesn't make deals. He's written the deal in this Bible. He says, I'm willing to forgive you and bring you into my kingdom if you will receive the healer, the Savior, Jesus the Lord, who died for you and gave himself for you. Amen. Well, let's bring this program to a conclusion by mentioning our text again, 3 John 2. It says, I pray you will prosper and be in health in the same measure that your soul prospers. Therefore, I encourage you to put the safekeeping of your eternal soul into the hands of the Savior, Jesus. Yeshua is his Hebrew name. The Bible promises that all who call upon his name shall be saved. And I invite you right now to put your hand on the place of pain or put your hand over your heart. And let's proclaim 1 Peter 2.24 that by the stripes of Jesus we were healed. And because Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever, we can be sure that God's promises never expire. God bless you. Well, That's all the time we have, and I invite you to stay in touch via the social media and also visit our website at exploits.tv where you can sign up for our electronic copy of our color ministry magazine, Exploits, with features on healing, Israel, and prophetic Bible teachings. The name of our ministry magazine, Exploits, is taken from Daniel 11.32, which says that The people who know God, you see that's the key, we have to know God, will be strong, not weak, will be strong and carry out exploits. That means we'll do the works of the Lord. Well, while visiting our website at exploits.tv, please look for details of our upcoming tours and prayer conferences in the Holy Land. And please share our program with your friends who may need encouragement or even healing. So until next time, always contending for the faith, always contending for both arms of the cross, for salvation and healing, and praying earnestly for the peace of Jerusalem, I'm Christine Darg. Shalom.